today, we're going to call the meeting to order of Thursday, August 8th, 2019 of the Historic Preservation Committee. And um, first of all, we'd like to open up to public comment. Public comment during this portion of the agenda must be limited to matters on the agenda for action. Each person has up to five minutes to speak on a specific agenda item. And we, if you come to the um, podium, please tell us your name clearly so that we can um, greet you um, properly. All right, any public comment at this time? Is this where you want us to speak? Yeah, this is, it gives you an opportunity to speak if you want to. Yeah. No, no we're, we're gonna have you speak under your agenda item. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. oh you're here on that, okay. That's fine. All right, I guess we don't have any public comment at this time, so we'll start with the minutes of the May 22nd, 2019 regular meeting. Has everybody had a chance to read the minutes? Yes. Okay. We'll need. I move to approve. Okay. Did you want to second it, Charlie? I'll second it. Okay. Second. Okay, um, any additions or corrections? Oh, I guess we already did that part. <laughs> okay, um, hearing none, then we'll place them on file. All right, um, next item on the agenda is courtesy review of changes planned for 525 Avenue B. Is that you? All right, um, let's see. And uh, Adam, uh, Chairwoman, uh, if I could just do a, a brief summary overview and then I can turn it over to uh, Tara Petroli. Please. So uh, Tara Petroli is remodeling 525 Avenue B for her new store called the Boulder City Company Store. Staff asked her to come before the Historic Preservation Committee to summarize her project and to answer questions. When modifications are pr proposed to the building exterior in the commercial area of the historic district, staff evaluates the proposal to determine uh, if the modifications are contributing elements, which are uh, modifications that support the architectural integrity of the district. These improvements do not require review by the committee. And then non-contributing elements uh, improvements that change and or diminish the architectural integrity of the district. Prior to the issuance of a building permit, these proposed changes are brought to the committee for review. As Ms. Petroli's proposed changes are contributing, uh, the Historic Preservation Committee review is not required, but she wanted the opportunity to update you on her project. For the committee's uh, courtesy review of this project, staff has included in the staff report the historic guidelines for downtown commercial buildings, um, the uh, page that highlights this building in the 1983 Janus report, and the uh, Secretary of Interior standards for rehabilitation. Okay, very good. Amy, we're so excited about your project downtown. I can't wait. Thank, Thank you, you for sharing with us. Yes, uh, we started this project at the end of October last year when we went into escrow. That is uh, legally when escrow began on 525, but two years ago is when uh, I personally began studying the Boulder City Company store and its origins as a project to take on as a future redevelopment project for myself as a business. And we trademarked it through the federal government who was happy to see that the store was going to be revived. Uh, so they, uh, they gave me the trademark without the S on the end. So we have the Boulder City Company store. Uh, it used to be the Boulder City Company stores. It is how six companies called it. Um, Troy, my husband, and I have been going through this process, but uh, I've been kind of spearheading it since I'm the native <laughs> Boulder Cityite, Boulderite, mm -hmm. as I've been, you'll see, recoining the term in our town. Uh, 
now the original company store was on the corner of Birch Street and Nevada Way, and it was demolished when the construction of the dam was completed in 1935. Actually, it stood until 1936 when uh, they finally demolished it. But um, the new store will be located on 525 where the antique depot used to be, which is right next to the backstop, which uh, I have to tell everybody. Everyone seems to know where the backstop is. <laughs> no one can't remember where the antique depot is, but anyway, everyone will know where the Boulder City Company store is, though, believe me. The, um, the RDA has been helping with the exterior improvement funds and the sign, which will be amazing because it is a reconstruction of the original and it will be a sight to behold when it is finally put up on the wall, uh, which I have to get with the city about. This, uh, they can put it up on the 20th, which means I need an encroachment license by then, which we need to talk about. We do have the, uh, we do have the uh, slide of the uh, sign. If we want to switch to that, that's going to be the first one of the PowerPoint. So if you can just push the button on the remote there. Oh, that's me. Um, sorry, I've been at a pool party. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, the... The, uh, the sign is on the top of the building. The historic nature of the building is going to uh, exist. Everything about the 1931 state of the building is being preserved and restored down to the brick of the, the individual bricks that were Hoover Dam concrete bricks laid and the Hoover Dam concrete floor, which doesn't have a crack in it. None of the slabs have cracks, which is pretty amazing. It is. You'll see those because they are exposed and sealed with clear. Uh, it's a story I'll, I'll be telling when people come in. Um, anyway, the very top height is 20 feet long, and that's the length of the sign. And it will have a backlit uh, LED lettering. It will have an LED neon that looks just like the one that used to exist. And to even make it look more genuine and old, I had the sign company create neon tubing on top of each letter, Boulder City Co. Store. And they are lead welding each neon tube. They're clear neon tubes that are being lead welded onto each letter and not lit like they're broken because it's like the sign was picked up off the ground and put up on the wall from the museum. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be amazing. Plus, we also wanted to get the Energy Star rating. So the neon that would have been put on top of the LED it just wasn't going to hit the mark energy-wise, so we went with the LED neon tube instead. But the neon glass from the side is going to look 1930s. Um, it, it, you'll see it'll be three-dimensional and true to the sign because it was neon glass on top of the, on top of the metal letters. So anyway, that's the sign. And it also has a very unique uh, Art Deco detail on the, underneath the boulder and the co, or like the Y on the city, there is an Art Deco scroll. Um, it's a triangular scroll uh, deco item that has been custom made to match the original sign on both sides. It'll be lit up at night. So you really couldn't match any closer to the original sign that I did. You really looked at every detail. It took about four months to make it, like the, just the details. Uh, we did remove the crickety awning that was, um, it was dry rotted 
uh, we, and it was not the original one anyway, because the slope of the awning didn't match the backstops. The backstops is original. It hadn't been altered, and the slope of the antique depots was altered to, um, the pitch was different. So we are recreating the original plan of the Roy Fairbanks men's store and barber shop awning to match the backstop and it will it will look like one continuous row of city street shopping with no change so it will look very like it used to be in the picture like this with the exposed rafters the three matching uh, posts and where there's a, a collar at the bottom, a more narrow frame going to the top, and the beams that stick out underneath. Um, anyway, very genuine. It's, it's just going to look just like that, just like it did. But in those, this picture is so old that the streets weren't even paved at the time. And one of those cars that you see on the street is going to be uh, on the inside of our store displayed. Wow. Yeah. So. Okay. Those were the three pictures that were there. I did bring the architectural plans for you to look at, and I do invite you to, if you would like, after tonight's meeting, we can go walk the property if you want to see the inside as well. Oh, yeah. Do you have any questions? Because I know you might have some detailed questions that I can answer for you. Alan? Alan, are you there? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, oh, I, have a, I, have a, I don't have any questions because Tara's been good about sharing her plans with me. And I, know I think this is one of the most exciting things that happened downtown. You know, it's not only um, um, because it's, it's finding a, a purpose for this building, but it's the rehabilitation of that building and, and then bringing it back to the uh, closer to the original um, form um, mm -hmm. of the original men's store, you know, by, by opening up that, that front facade and creating that entry. Yes. Um, and also, you know, as far as the, um, what, she, what Tara's brought is she spent a lot of homework and a lot of these stories of the company store, I don't think many of our kids know what the company store was, but to bring back those stories and bring back the history and, you know, be part of this effort of the city to be, you know, um, promoting historic tourism. And I just want to say that, you know, I can't, you know, Tara has worked very hard and I know that Alan Schromberg, I don't know if he's there or not, but has a lot to do with uh, recreating this. And he's our, been our go-to person as far as, you know, architecture and historic district. And um, I just want to say, you know, thank you very much, Tara, for all your mm -hmm. efforts. And I know you have a lot of work that you left to do. And I hope the city can do all it can to help you um, get this thing open as soon as you can so you can start recouping those loans that I know you've taken out. And, uh, and uh, as a, as a woman owned business and as somebody is in, involved in historic preservation, you know, I applaud you and you know, anything that we can do to help you to be successful. Um, you know, I, I hope we can do that. Well, thank you. Um, yeah. I didn't mention the historic entrance coming back into play with the display cases. I don't know if you're aware of the historic entrance in the men's store. Uh, we also found the safe in the ground, which it can be shown to people. Well, it will be shown to people. What I am concerned about, though, is my store possibly being able to be open around Labor Day in the coffee side and this and the sewer pipe construction on Avenue B <laughs> being around that same time as my store opening <laughs> after all this. All these hurdles. When they, maybe they could work on a different street for a month. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'll have a private talk with Mike. But um, I'm just happy to present, and we, I would be happy to stick around for the meeting if you want to take a walk across the street and see it as the historic members. Yeah, Tara, I for one would love to yeah. do that. And okay. Okay, would, I'll stick I around would, in yes. Troy and I'll 
So, anyone it's incredible. Anyone what, that's it, here it, can come because yeah. we're all here. Yeah. Okay. It, yeah, it, it's incredible what you're doing. I, I'm just amazed at it, and I'm anxious to see it to see it open. Uh, Good. So thanks for coming. I've been, we, my wife and I, have been following it ever since you started. I think we, when's this going? When's it coming? You know. So yeah. I saw them working there today, so they were doing something. Oh yeah, the the fire code made us turn the door around. The front door had to be turned around. Oh. <laughs> so it opens outward. Because yeah, well. this, because uh, that's one of the issues. So All we right. turn the door, so it pushes out now, on the front. Well, it's an example of what hopefully can be done going forward with other buildings. I mean, it's yeah. a beautiful job. So thanks. Thank you very much. Amy, thank you again, and thanks for sharing. And we're all very excited for you and for the community. OK. Um, let's see. At this time, we'll do a presentation by the Bureau of Reclamation about planned safety projects at the Hoover Dam. And if I could just do a, a brief introduction, the uh, Bureau of Reclamation has requested an opportunity to come before the Historic Preservation Committee to provide an update on Hoover Dam projects. Len Schilling, uh, area manager of the Lower Colorado Dam Office, is here to present their information and answer questions. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to just uh, introduce Mark Cook, who's the facility manager at Hoover Dam. He's here with me today. So um, if the questions get too tough, I'm going to defer to Mark. So, um, let's see. This is working for slides. Yeah. Uh, so we have two projects we, got, we uh, feel like we need to do to improve safety. Uh, the first project I'll talk about is really employee safety. And along the transformer deck, so uh, parallel to the river, those decks for the powerhouse base, the power plant there, the powerhouses, there's the decks where we have vehicles and stuff parked. That's the transformer deck. So that big long area down by the river there. Um, there's a step up where we have the transformers themselves. So in the pictures I'm showing now, that concrete that's about just a little bit less than 48 inches tall. And then the, the, the horizontal platform where people walk along there is about 41 inches where it narrows where those columns are. Um, that roll-up door, that roll-up door behind that roll-up door is a, what's called a break. It's a big breaker. So we have folks very frequently working up here on this platform, transiting, transiting around the platform and on the platform. So a couple years ago, we had a um, gentleman fall and break an arm off of this, and we had a record before that it happened before also. So we tried to find different methods of figuring out how to um, I guard from a fall, basically, and keep people from getting hurt. And we, we really came to a solution that really is just putting up a permanent handrail. Um, you can see this is just another uh, view looking down um, the, the transformer deck and to the left where that red arrow is, there is a just a small section of rail. We really don't know, the, we couldn't figure out the history of when and who put that up and why. Um, uh, so, but anyway, it'll be similar to that. We're going to work with the company to come up with a, a plan to, to put up something that'll, that'll be aesthetically you know, minimize the impact, but be effective fall protection measure for the workers. Um, so uh, that that is a, that for that project. If there's any questions or thoughts or concerns, I'd certainly be happy to answer them. I have a question, just Lynn, about uh, yeah. who's the governing agency that uh, that determines whether or not you need to have a safety rail there. I, so, so OSHA would drive that, or we could have, or we could have stricter policies of reclamation. Yeah, okay. um, that 48 inches is we are just below the 48 inch, you know, driver for the requirement. But where we've had a couple injuries and we have frequent workers up there, we just feel it's prudent to do. It'd be it, we want to prevent further injuries, and so that's why we're we're proposing it and working on it. So. The only thing I would add yeah. <laughs> or ask about, I think it's because everybody else's is on, 
um, is, are you consulting with the SHPO and the ACHP on this because yeah. it's a National Historic Landmark? Yeah, we, should, we could consult both with Nevada and Arizona SHPOs. For, all, for both projects that we're going to talk about tonight, we are in the process of consulting with both of those agencies. So, and, and we actually will tell them that we've reached out to you all to, to talk about the projects too. So, okay, any other questions on that, that project? Okay, the much bigger project is this. So on the top of the dam, uh, so prior to two, th two years ago, if, if you've been out to the dam for a while or, or, or you know, been there, f you know, anyway, the last three years, remember the top of the dam, on the lake side, we didn't have a sidewalk. It's a pr it was a pretty narrow sidewalk. I mean, no, no kind of guardrail system, no kind of handrail system, nothing. It was sidewalk, small curb, street. So there was no barrier between the people and the sidewalk. On the river side of the dam, we had a small railing system, you know, small post and cable system. Really was just meant to keep some people from getting into the street because people will back out all the time and take pictures in the street if there's nothing there. Uh, so a couple years ago, we started looking at that and then when with the kind of the world events that were happening with vehicles and stuff, we really felt like we had a real big vulnerability on top of the dam. We get between five and six million people who come visit the dam every year and a lot of pedestrians on the dam, on the top of the dam. And we really felt like we really urgently had to do something. So if you've been down to the dam within the last couple of years, we put up a temporary barricade barrier system. Basically, we use plastic um, jersey barriers, you know, traffic barriers, and a, a metal fence system, or temporary in nature, to keep that pedestrian vehicle separation. Um, and, and while we did that temporary measure, we started looking at this design, a permanent design, to put down something that would, of course, look a lot better and provide that protection for the for the public visiting the dam. So we come up with what best we are think our best thought was a bouldering cable system, um, but heavier bowlers. So if a vehicle struck it, they they can't you know they wouldn't penetrate it, but into the sidewalk and be able to just keep driving down the sidewalk. So the bouldering cable system again, and you can see the the renderings there of what it will look like designed additional to this project. The uh, lakeside is very narrow sidewalk. We actually, with this project, will extend that sidewalk out a little bit and get a little bit of better sidewalk. And we also didn't have any handicap ramps, particularly on the lakeside. So we get wheel, you know, people in wheelchairs and stuff could only go so far and they would kind of be caught on the top of the dam. We'll fix all of that and get ADA compliant ramps and stuff in, installed with this project also. But, you know, it really is a, a pedestrian safety measure to keep, you know, that pest pedestrian vehicles separate from each other. Um, we also, with this project, and it's kind of a little hard to see, but in the picture, but those areas we're putting in raised crosswalks. That'll give us a nice, again, you know, wheelchair accessible crossing the dam and, and be able to really flow better the pedestrian traffic and keep away the vehicle traffic. So that is basically just of that project, kind of really in short, is just adding ballers. We'll get extend a little bit on our sidewalk and putting in handicap accessible throughout the top of the dam. So, and that's that's it. Unless somebody, anybody has questions on on this project. I guess not. Well, uh, thank you very well, much. All right, thank you for uh, allowing me to come and take the time. So. Well, yeah. Thank you, Lynn. I, I Alan. Yeah. I have a comment, yeah. a question. Yeah. Um, this is Alan. Sorry I'm not here. I don't see a detail in my packet about the actual bollards there. And, and I really appreciate that because I know what you mean about the plastic temporary nature of the, you know, the, the uh, pedestrian um, um, craft right now. And this is a, a great improvement of what is there currently. My only um, suggestion would be like, you know, especially in the dam itself, if you look at the dam, um, including, let's say, um, near the, you know, the, the brass doors, near the elevators and the columns, there's so much artistic detail um, that is part of the dam's decorative art. I mean, in the smallest details, for example, you know, there are some brass railings that are near the elevators, I believe, a turtle heads and things like that. Yeah. Is there any consideration of adding a little bit more um, 
pulling a, a you know themes from what is existing down there, maybe a deco theme or a lot of that stuff on the, on the top is the Anasazi theme to add a little bit more decorative theme onto those ballers, just to make them look less modern and more in in you know in, in the kind of detailed work of the the dam. I know cost is an extra. I mean, if they you know, concern, but, you know, something that was just a little bit more deco, a little, a little bit more decorative, because a lot of those details on top of the dam are highly decorative, and I love to see that theme rather than too much of a clean, modern theme, which is, you know, kind of close to the information center, but especially on the dam itself, it is so detailed, and, and you know, there's, if you look at the, the top of the dam, there's always surprises when you start looking at the details here. And I think that's one of the major, you know, aspects of those bollards are going to are going to be a major architectural feature and, and look of that dam, and maybe consider a little bit more architectural detail in those bollards. Yeah, we talk, we you know we'll talk about that some more, and I, I appreciate that. Um, we actually talked about that some of how much we should do, you know, with the bollards and and how much decorative stuff on the bollards we we should have. And we really came back with what, what our discussions, and we'll talk about it again, but was really to try to like simplify the bowlers so we can, you know, and really keep the highlight on the historic features of the dam. So that's kind of how we, we went with the, we, we were talking to our architects and stuff, was to try to keep it more simple, really as simple as we could on the bowlers and cable system to try to keep the focus away from that and back on the dam. But, but we can certainly talk about it some more. About, yeah. Should we? Well, my concern is just looking at it. It's going to be a major, and and part of the is the part of the view. When I'm looking at a perspective, it's a foreshortened view, so it lo it looks it dominates the view. But uh, just something for consideration. I, that's the only thing I'd like to see. Maybe a, a little bit more, a little more detail in on the board, just to give it a little more distinctive. Um, you know, I don't know if the clock towers or something or the columns. If you could imitate something to do with the you know with the architecture of the dam. I think it would enhance that, but that's just my comment. Okay. Yeah, I appreciate Thank it. We'll, we'll we'll look at it again. We'll talk about it. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Uh, Lynn, did did Shippo have any comments? Did did uh... we 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 have only got so we've we've sent out the letter to Shippo, um, and we have not got any specific comments back. You know, our, our letter came back. They said, hey, we think this does. Right now, they said we think this does have an impact for for Arizona Shippo. Uh, that wasn't Arizona. The Nevada Shippo just got that this morning. They said, "Hey, we, so we have some more discussion with the Shippo okay. to talk about, you know, what we're, what their concerns are and what we can do." Um, you know, we we know we have a risk, and it's yeah. just how do we balance risk and historic? It's, it's a sure. it's a tough balance. Actually, I hadn't thought about that, but you've got two Shippos, don't you? <laughs> yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah, we do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. I will say I really like the concept of the bollards with the cable because the cable is definitely a low profile intrusion on the landscape or on the view or the you know the architectural features that are there. I would not recommend replicating um, an exact reproduction, I should say, of some Art Deco feature. Um, you're really not supposed to. Um, make a duplicate or a copy of something that is within your historic fabric. Um, so, for instance, don't replicate um, the towers. Yeah, um, I understand. But definitely, I would consider what Alan was suggesting, and that is something that is doesn't detract from yeah. the historic site um, or the other, you know, decorative features. But you also want it to be modern, of course, so that people know what's there and I guess one of my questions was the bollards could they be the same color as the sidewalk and yeah it just blends right into the that's, concrete well yeah there are different colors we have different color palettes that we can pick from for the bollards so the bollards themselves it's actually a steel pipe and the bollards actually just a cover that slides over the steel pipe so um, the, the, the structural strength is all from the steel pipe, concrete steel pipe, pipe underneath. But the bollards itself, we have a lot of flexibility on color. We do, we think gray is the right color just to try to like blend in as much as we can. Um, and that's where we're headed. But I mean, we're obviously open to color, you know, the color won't, you know, 
And what's the material of the bollard, the exterior of the bollard? It'll probably be like a stainless steel or some of It has to be metal. It can't be steel. concrete. Uh, no, I don't think that would work very well with concrete. Just because of the, it would have to be so big, it would get way out into the side, you know, it would take too much more sidewalk space. So we needed to, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Right. Anything else? Okay. Thank you very much for All your right, presentation. All right, thank you for your time. Thanks. Mm -hmm. okay. At this time, um, there's going to be a staff update regarding. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me? At this time, there will be a staff update regarding festoon lighting over downtown Arizona Street. In an effort to promote tourism and support local businesses, the city is planning to install bistro lighting along a portion of Arizona Street. Similar to other public works projects, uh, for example, um, some of the bus stops that have been installed throughout the community, um, staff is bringing this to the Historic Preservation Committee to answer any questions. The uh, proposed uh, uh, Bistro light or festoon lighting. And if I could get the uh, first image. There will be uh, 10 poles. Each of the poles will be approximately 22 feet in height. The poles will match the color of the existing uh, light poles along Arizona. And the string of lights would be LED lights that can change color um, and have a remote control for uh, color changes for um, different um, special events and holiday events. As part of the process in, in um, considering the installation of these um, festoon or bistro lights, staff went to each of the adjacent property owners and spoke with them about this proposed project and they are supportive of the proposed project as a way to help attract people to the downtown area and to promote tourism. Uh, we've also included in your packet, as well as on the screen, an example of what these lights would look like at night. Um, and staff is here to answer any questions. So I do have a couple questions. They're 22 feet high, but what's the material and what's the circumference of the poles? The uh, material um, would be a metal material. I do not have the circumference, but I can provide that to the uh, committee. They would be uh, thinner, though, than the existing light poles. Can they be attached to the buildings in lieu of adding a non-historic pole in the historic district? I know that that's one of the things that was uh, asked of the Public Works staff. Besides needing to work out the arrangements to be able to do that, since those are private property, I think one of the concerns and the reason why these poles would be placed into the concrete is to support the tension of the wires. And so I think the concern would be um, attaching it to the buildings. Um, they wouldn't be able to support that. Are the poles electrified? No, the poles would not be electrified. And is there anything else that you plan to in the future put on the poles? Are there utilities such as 5G, cellular? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Had to say it. <laughs> I don't know if the poles would support that. Public Works has not indicated adding anything else to them. And I think that goes back to the structural integrity. They're being designed to be able to support the lighting and um, I think there would be concerns about structural strength of the poles for additional equipment. That's all I have for now. Well, the only question I, I have are, are these, if, if we're looking at these from a uh, historic perspective, are, are these kind of things compliant with, with uh, historic downtown preservation? I mean, is there any historic uh, precedent, precedent yeah, for, for this kind of thing? 
Well, I guess other public improvements that have been made within uh, the downtown and the rest of the historic district, including some of the bus stops, those aren't historic in nature, yeah. um, but uh, have been built to uh, serve the community. Uh, the uh, lighting that is along Nevada Way currently, you've probably driven down Nevada Way at night and seen yeah. how the lighting has been affixed to the, uh, the street trees. Um, that's another ornamental feature similar to this to help highlight the downtown and to attract visitors. That's not historical in nature either. No, no exactly. Well, I feel that the lighting would enhance the historical areas downtown. Uh, when you drive downtown with the lights, the current lights, I, I just think it's magical. I mean, it's just really different. And so I think this will sort of enhance that as well. I would say that there is precedence for festooning Main Streets and our Main Street with lighting, like at Christmas time. Um, there are those types of lights. Um, and then there have been, uh, there are historic photographs that show different banners and um, things strewn across the streets. However, it's using existing buildings and or light poles or utility poles and not adding additional infrastructure. So is there any existing poles that could be utilized in, in lieu of it adding these extra poles? I can certainly check with Public Works to see if there's the opportunity to use existing poles for this apparatus in the uh, stretching of the lights. So these lights and poles then belong to the city. They don't, the property owners have no liability or any, anything to do with the, with the poles and the lights. I mean, that's a city, city owned. Correct. Property. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And then on your sketch drawing, it says there are two banners drawn. What are those? It would provide the potential to put up banners for special events that occur within the downtown. So not permanent banners no. or no designation of that street or anything? No. Okay. S similar to how the city utilizes banners on street lights elsewhere within the community. Okay. Good idea. Um, I have a comment. No, I, I, I agree with Linda. I think that part of the, um, I think the original Nevada Highway lights came up, I think the history of that is they came up one Christmas and everybody loved them so much they, they stayed up. But I remember when I first moved to Boulder City, the joke was the whole town, you know, um, got um, the, the mat rolled up at 8 o'clock and nothing was open. And, uh, you know, it kind of says we're open for business, especially in the historic district. And I was always wondering about Arizona Street because, you know, I think that will enhance the property values down there and maybe, in, you know, um, encourage people to, let's say, the scratch house, you know, becomes a more desirable um, area for a restaurant and, and because it becomes part of that, that dining entertainment district and it, and it shows that we're kind of open for business. So I, I, I love this look and right now because it opens up that whole different area to, that we are open. This is not in a bad way, but brings you down um, Arizona Street also. That's my comment. Is it? Go ahead, Alan. Oh, you Do you hear what I said? Oh, that's it. Okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I, 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 I like it because I think it, it opens up as, you know, it kind of identifies a, an entertainment and dining district. And, you know, I think Arizona needs it because it'll only enhance, you know, places like, you know, we have the abandoned scratch house, make that property more valuable, uh, encourages tourists to go down to um, that area, uh, especially along, you know, Hotel Plaza. There's restaurants that are opening now there at night, and I think that you know we might even consider um, putting extending that um, those festoon lighting over the hotel plaza area also. It's an area, you know, possible area for festoon lighting. 
because I know that there's a restaurant down there, and you know that, you know, and and, and as we as we grow and, and these as these places find uh, more opportunities, as these businesses change and evolve, I think that you know we have a district now that is you know open past eight o'clock or, or whatever. So it's it's kind of exciting down there. There's signs of life in Boulder City. Thank you. That's it. Thank you, Alan. All right. Any other comments? Oh, are they allowed to come to the podium? Oh, yes, please do. Good evening. My name is Glenn Fan. Um, I, I, the drawing that you showed on the screen looked like it uh, just proposal that only goes down to the scratch house. Um, I thought it looks like a pretty good idea, but because you've got the Dillinger and you've got Evans on down, why not continue it on down the rest of the block? And if you're going to kind of try and highlight the, those businesses, why not continue it all the way down so people can follow the lights, you know, all the way down? You know. There's a couple of other businesses down there just besides the hotel and, and the Chamber of Commerce. Those places aren't really, you know, evening activities, but either Dillinger is and uh, Evans is open for dinner. There is the uh, antique shop just down the street. They're open till I think nine o'clock. So maybe encourage people to walk down there too with the added lighting. You know, people might be attracted to lights like bugs. <laughs> <laughs> please, well, please come forward. Also, the bowling alley. You know, along the other plaza. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's another area that can continue down there. It's just you know, the bowling alley is open at night. That's true. Um, James Adams, uh, I am a council member, but I am just here to represent my own thoughts and opinions. Um, I do share some of the concerns that Blair has about um, definitely protecting our historic infrastructure and not just adding on top of it. At the same time, I think this would be a really great idea to uh, bring people into that area. So it's kind of like a, a catch-22 on that end. So it would be nice if we could find a way to accomplish this without um, interfering too much with um, the historic properties uh, or the historic values in that area. Um, also kind of piggybacking on Glenn uh, a little bit there. I know I have um, specifically spoken to at least one business in uh, Hotel Plaza area who happened to mention after seeing the lights on the trees saying it would be really nice if they maybe at brought a little bit of that into this Hotel Plaza area to again attract people, let them know we're here because sometimes some of those businesses tucked away in the corner feel like they don't have the uh, attention maybe that they would like to have that what everybody sees down there and they don't even know that there are some of those businesses right there so just things that I have heard in the community that I would also like to share thank you thank you okay Blair, oh. you, okay I have one more comment um, when considering the lighting um, I'm hoping that the city chooses lighting that isn't meant for illumination but rather for accent and I'm assuming you're gonna utilize LED. Um, if you could utilize not a bright LED, a bright white, but instead um, a yellow on the spectrum, um, that diminishes that um, blinding brightness that um, is not, does not add to the ambiance, but instead enhances the, the feeling that I think is what you're looking for, so. Consult with a um, lighting specialist, and that's what they'll tell you. <laughs> I will uh, certainly convey that to uh, the Public Works Department. And um, Chairwoman Graham, regarding the point about expanding this, mm -hmm. the intent was for this to be the initial phase to see mm -hmm. how the community reacts to this mm -hmm. concept, but there is the opportunity to extend it beyond the initial uh, block down Arizona and um, other areas, so. Good, great. All right, thank you very much. All right, then, um, next item is update on certified local government application. Yes, thank you. So on July 9th, the City Council approved an agreement with the uh, State Historic Preservation Office, or what we refer to as SHPO, uh, for the city's certified local government designation. The required application has been sent to SHPO and we are awaiting review and approval by the National Park Service. 
that is a condition for becoming a certified local government design designation. Subject to NPS approval, staff will coordinate with SHPO to uh, schedule training this fall uh, with uh, the committee regarding the Secretary of Interior standards for rehabilitation. In the interim, staff has provided in your packet um, a couple of different documents, including the Secretary of Interior Standards for Rehabilitation, the Nevada Certified Local Government Handbook, and at the request of um, uh, Committee Member uh, Davenport, we've also provided on the dais, and we have copies here for the audience, of the agreement between the city and SHPO that was approved by the uh, City Council on July 9th. And I can answer any questions. Does committee members have any questions? Alan, any questions? Okay, then. We'll uh, no, no, I'm, I'm glad we're moving ahead and uh -huh. you know, waiting for the NPS and great. That was one of our big goals and I'm glad to see it's moving forward. Yes, I agree. All right, thank you very much. All right, um, discussion on the committee's future goals and priorities relative to city council direction on July 9th, 2019. So the uh, city council has requested that during the next two historic preservation committee meetings, that the committee provide recommendations uh, regarding priorities for historic preservation efforts back to the city council. For the benefit of the committee, uh, staff has included in your staff report the Historic Preservation Committee priority list that was included in your April 24th packet, as well as Goal C from the city's 2025 strategic plan addressing historic preservation efforts. And so again, you, you have two meetings to discuss this, and then we will take the uh, recommendations of the committee back to the city council. Any questions? I don't have any questions, but um, it, looking at this, it looks to me like the Bullock Field Historic District is something that we worked on quite a bit. And then at the time, we put it on hold because um, we wanted to work on local, um, certified local government. So I'd like to see us go back to that one and um, try to get that designated as a historic district since we had worked so hard on it before. Any comments from either of you? I'll say regarding the Bullock Field property, we were also waiting for the city's response or reception, I guess, of bids for what to do, requests for proposals, and if any of those came in and um, it kind of plays into what maybe that, yeah, if that's a priority or not. Right. Yeah, I just thought, thought it was, it's like unfinished business, like we really need to clean it up and carry it through. And so if I can provide some additional background mm -hmm. on that item. Uh, earlier this year, the city did um, uh, have a request for information that was sent out um, asking for interested parties to submit their ideas for the hangar and the adjacent mm -hmm. land. Yeah. Uh, there was three responses to that proposal. It is expected that we will be bringing those three proposals to you at the second meeting, well, at the meeting in August, this is a specially called right. meeting, but at the uh, uh, meeting that will occur at the end of this month um, for the Historic Preservation Committee, representatives of each of those um, uh, proposals will be here to present and answer questions of the committee. So you'll have uh, uh, the proposals and be able to review and, and ask questions. So you'll have an uh, understanding of, of what their visions for that area would be. Would that mean that we, if if in fact, I mean, I'm just thinking out loud, if in fact those, one of those ideas becomes reality, does that mean that we no longer pursue the historic district or do we still 
maintain a historic district in that area? Certainly that's at the discretion of the committee and of the city council for that designation. Okay. Uh, one of the criteria in the RFI was that proposals would um, preserve the hangar and would look to um, its historical significance in whatever is being proposed and right. they would be uh, sharing that with you and that's the reason why these proposals are coming before the committee at the end of the month. Okay, okay. Any other comments on that? How about uh, you? I, don't have, I don't have any comments on that particular item, no. I, I think you know, we're, we're still on hold, okay. <laughs> waiting to see what happens. Um, I do have, after having read these, uh, because I wasn't on the committee when these when this list was made, um, it was made prior just to me coming on here. But <clears throat> in light of some of the recent developments, I there, there's I've got some items that I would like to place on the list of goals uh, to, to be presented to the council, and uh, I would like to just read them. Um, and I'd like them put on the agenda for discussion because I understand this is the first of the two meetings, right? Mm -hmm. So we only have one more meeting to, to come up with a list of goals to go to the council. That's correct. So, yeah. and in, in, in light of the fact that we're still not a full here committee, uh, I'd like to, I'm, I'm going to present these uh, suggestions and then I would like them put on the agenda for next next month's hearing, you know, so we can discuss it next month. But the first one I'd like to see, um, I believe the Historic Preservation Committee should petition the City Council to begin the process of amending the City Charter to create under Title III a new Chapter 5 Historic Preservation Commission. And I would reference uh, Title Three Boards and Commissions, Chapter One Definitions of Commission versus Committee, because I really think that uh, it's time for the Historic Preservation Committee to become a commission um, as defined in Title Three. Okay, so that's the first recommendation for uh, an additional goal. The second one I have is I, I believe the Historic Preservation Committee should review Ordinance Number 1103, titled An Ordinance Amending Title 11 by adding a new Chapter 27 entitled Historic Preservation, which was adopted by the City Council on February 22, 2000, and repealed by Ordinance Number 1243, passed by City Council on March 8, 2000. And five. After review, the committee, if deemed necessary, should recommend changes and present the revised ordinance to the city council for consideration. Now, I, I realize that that's one of the something similar to that is in the uh, strategic plan as one of the goals. But I, I just want to be more specific about that. The third one, I have uh, a suggestion. I would recommend that the city expedite the engagement of an individual or company to inventory properties within the current boundaries of the Boulder City Historic District. And I, I use that term because there's a number of references to doing inventories, but none of them that are in the, in the strategic plan reference doing a specific inventory of the existing properties. We talk about doing, adding new ones and et cetera and so on. And I'm concerned particularly with the older housing units uh, on the avenues. Uh, they, they need, we need to have a survey done or a, uh, an inventory made of that housing and determine whether or not any of it's historic. Because quite honestly, I don't think most of it is. Um, then the fourth one is, after a new inventory of buildings within the Boulder City Historic District and the Historic Preservation Committee. No, I'm 
sorry, <laughs> let me free. After a new inventory of buildings within the Boulder City Historic District, the Historic Preservation Committee should review and modify, if necessary, the Historic District Exterior Design Guidelines and make these guidelines mandatory. In my opinion, if we don't make guidelines mandatory, we don't have a historic preservation committee or plan. So those four items I would like to put on the agenda next week for discussion. Um, and I can give you a copy of this, Michael, if you want to. And I don't care if you change the wording, I, that doesn't matter, but I would like to see these four items added to a list of proposed goals to go to City Council. Now the inventory um, properties, I just have a question, um, that doesn't fall under three or five? Well, that, it may. It just look at it just to see if that falls under, or it's something different. Um, well, see, it's pursuing and the, the issue that I have with it, with number three, is that it says pursuing an inventory of additional residential properties. Okay, I, I mean, that's fine if we want to do that, but we need to have an inventory or a survey done of the existing historic district. <clears throat> Because it was de de defined in, in 1982, 83, and it was supposed to have been inventoried every 10 years, and it's never been inventoried. Is that because of the expense? Or no, that's because of the uh, city councils and et cetera that didn't bother to do it. That's uh, mm. why it was not done. Okay, because on the CLG, um, I did see something about that on this uh, goal and strategies. Right, again, it's, yeah. it's, it's, right, it, it's there, uh -huh. but it isn't there. On this priority list, discussion list. Well, <laughs> it, it, isn't, it isn't there as, uh, as defined. Let me, let me find the place here. Where are we at? All right. I lost my way. Um, okay. The um, there's a strategy three that says explore adding new historic preservation districts, okay? Yeah, it says here, uh, start February 15th and 6-30-21, so that's quite a, a bit of time yet. Right, but, the, but it says explore adding new historic preservation districts. I'm yeah, talking that. about surveying the existing historic district. Well, we've talked about that before, but it seemed to me like it was going to be something expensive. Like it was good. Oh, Chairwoman, I'm sorry. Oh, Chairman oh, Graham, uh, if I could uh, oh. provide some additional background okay. information. Okay. I think it's correct to put it on the list because okay. it's inferred in different goals and objectives, both with strategic plan um, as well as the priorities. And the city council did approve with fiscal year 20 uh, as part of the budget monies to update the 1983 okay. Janus report. Okay. Having said that, city council is looking for the committee's direction in terms of priorities. And so okay. adding it to the list saying updating the Janus report is yeah. a priority is appropriate. Okay. okay. And actually maybe we can term it that way. Yeah, I was going to say, Janus I think I'll change it to Janus report. report. Yeah, here we are. Okay. And as the committee may recall, one of the purposes to pursuing uh, CLG designation was the opportunity for the city to take advantage 
of SHPO uh, grants right. help pay for that survey. Yes, I do remember uh, when the city manager spoke to us, he specifically said that, that he was looking forward to that grant process that we could apply for. So, so there should be some money available to help, uh, you know, to help fund that. that yeah, inventory. well, they've already funded it, right, in the budget? Yeah, we, yeah. we, we yeah. put $30,000 in the budget, okay. yeah. but we're also actively and hopefully going to pursue grant funds. Okay, from them. CLG. Right. Okay. Okay, then we'll add it. And you're going to give copy to... So it's clear, or he can talk to you more, you know, if he, if he needs more well, we, clarification. I will give whoever wants a copy a copy. I haven't made copies, but I'm sure we can make copies. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you could bring them next time when we make well, some more discussion. Well, if I could just clarify, okay. I, I, we have, I think, everything that's being shared by the committee, we will incorporate in the list so that with the next staff report, you will have all of that so you can look at it in its totality. Okay. And then the committee can use that as a way to drill Decide. down to your highest priorities yeah. to share with right. the city council. Right, okay. Thank you, we appreciate your help there. So Charlie, I completely support your four proposals. They're oh. spot on. Well, thanks Byron, yeah. And yeah. I would, just maybe add another one, or maybe this fifth one perhaps kind of summarizes your proposals, and that is that it's on the city's strategic plan to develop a historic preservation plan. Oh, yeah. And I believe that plan could reference your four proposals. Um, but in the meantime, we could go forward with what um, with, with your proposals or your ideas, I think, while also pursuing the development of a historic preservation plan. And I would also add to, I guess it's number three, to re-inventory re the existing historic district. Um, we're not just re-inventorying the structures, but um, historic preservation and history has um, been um, improved upon, I guess, over the years. And so there are other historic features in the historic district, such as landscapes um, and um, perhaps other features that I can't think of at this point that should be considered. Um, so. I'm, I'm a, one, of the, one of the concerns that I have after <laughs> digging, I mean, this, this will come up later, but I, it, I observe as I walk down the avenues that it's not just the degradation of the housing that is a problem in terms of historic value, but the landscaping. If you look at the landscape, the uh, guidelines for landscaping on avenues B, C, D, California, et cetera, they haven't been followed anywhere. They've been absolutely ignored. And in fact, the guidelines that are written for the avenues specifically say in the guidelines that you don't need to pay any attention to these guidelines. <laughs> now, that is just ridiculous. I mean, I don't know how in the world that ever happened, because that's what it says. Oh, not exactly. Well, the wording is a little different, but not much. My, Michael, maybe you can uh, look into that to see why it's like... Well, it's I have a partial answer to that, I oh, think, Alan. Stalin, okay. <laughs> is that historically, you know, the avenues were temporary housing. So the guidelines weren't strictly, you know, the permanent housing was the reclamation houses on the Colorado and Denver streets, and, you know, then there was the... Uh, the um, the um, the um, the uh, LA Water and Power and the Cherry Streets and those things, but one of the things historically and originally on the um, on the Avenue houses, they weren't allowed to have lawns. It was actually zeroscape, you know, it was the cactus and 
very much what the uh, water authority would like. That's what you know was originally intended. As a matter of fact, because they were trying to have people not plant water because they're concerned about the water uses, but people kind of worked around this thing, so it's kind of evolved a little bit more organically on the avenues, which were designed as temporary houses, and originally those were supposed to be all torn down after the construction of the dam. Now they remain up and in, in place. And, um, and that's one of the reasons I think there's some confusion. Like one of the things about our, our, that we have to consider and in, in, in when we look at the historic preservation ordinance is that, um, you know, every neighborhood or every street is a little bit different, you know, and, and it can't be a blanket, um, um, you know, effort to, to, to kind of create, you know, one ordinance that covers everything. In fact, I just had dinner with uh, friends from uh, San Diego Mission Hills area who, who are in a historic district, and, and I was, we we're discussing the history of the historic uh, preservation in San Diego in particular. And that effort started block by block, um, and now it's incorporated into the city. And it's a mixture of not only laws but incentives to have people, you know, buy into historic. So. It's, it's, it's not only you know restrictions, but also incentives to encourage people um, to to you know to do historic um, preservation. Hope that clarifies it a little bit. Well, so that's why the avenues are a little mixed up. I don't I, there's, <laughs> well, Alan, I don't know about that. I think these these historic guidelines that were written, I believe, in 2006, 2007. Okay, right. and they're pretty plain. I mean, they're for landscaping front yards, continuous parkways, city land between sidewalks and street is not interrupted by sidewalks or driveways. Number two, under front yards, continuous lawn with waterways, uh, with walkways to the front doors. And number three, no driveways. Now I would venture to say that 90% of the houses along avenues B, C, D, California, F, have driveways and they have concreted the uh, the, the, the city land between uh, the. Uh, oh, right, right. I thought you were supposed to be talking specifically about landscaping. I'm sorry. Well, uh, I understand it. Yeah. But yes. I, but the thing that I object to that just drives me nuts is it says permits will not be delayed with the proposed remodel work if the proposed remodel work complies with the approved guidelines. Okay. Also, permits will not be delayed, and they capitalize not, be delayed for non-compliance with most of the features on the attached guidelines. The only circumstance under which a permit would be delayed are, number one, adding a second story, which has been done on many occasions, several occasions, and number two, changing the roof type or pitch of the existing house or an enclosed addition visible. Those are the only two reasons that, that they might even delay the rest of them. Any other of these guidelines, they can completely be ignored, and, and they are. Uh, and I just, I think, what is the purpose of having guidelines if you don't have some <clears throat> mandatory uh, requirement that they be followed? That's right. why they're called guidelines. No, I, I agree, because we, we are in danger of, uh, you know, I mean, it's part of the reason we want to re-inventory this thing, because actually if you, if you, if you, you know, if it's beyond modification, we could, you know, theoretically lose our historic district because nothing conforms any longer. I mean, that's kind of the theory here. I think that's there, why you re I think there's a large part of the historic district that, yes, does, does fall in that category. Now, there are other parts of the historic district that are beautiful, you know, the tree streets and uh, Denver and et cetera. But I'm talking about, well, there are the company six temporary housing is basically what it is. And, and that's right. and then the avenue. And I think it's a shame that, that those have been completely ignored. So... Anyway, that's why those four items are in there, in part. Right. Uh, so. Blair, anything else? Uh, okay. You have something, Alan? Yeah, I just wanted to, um, you know, I, I agree with that. These are good discussion points, and I, um, 
the, the, the comments, but I also feel that um, one of the things that I'm concerned about is that, you know, with the, um, uh, with the improvements going along, and it kind of goes back to Bullock's Field, with the improvements going along, Boulder City Parkway, and now with the um, funding in place, uh, the funding mechanism in place for the State Railroad Museum, it is, you know, along the Battle of William Boulder City Parkway, um, that, you know, we are in danger of maybe losing uh, some historic buildings only because um, one of the things that the Historic Preservation um, Committee does do, and maybe we haven't been as vigilant as we can, obviously because of the comments on the avenues, but it's like we are the only um, thing in the city that prevents, you know, one of the things that happens within the Historic District is somebody pulls a permit, there's at least an alarm that goes up and says something is happening here. You know, there's an automatic reaction to it. And my interest in, in, in making it high priority to other historic districts is that, um, especially with that redevelopment of that area, is that if we don't create new historic districts, there's nothing that prevents any of those historic buildings that are in that corridor to be... Um, you know, to be uh, changed or taken down as long as it conforms with our our current zoning and building codes, you know. And that's why I feel like these other historic districts are still important. Um, you know, and there's other ways to do an inventory. We don't have to do an in-depth inventory. We can do uh, what is called kind of a window shield, just kind of at least a quick inventory of what's there so we know at least what's there before we lose them. Because once we lose them, then we can't bring them back. And so, you know, the, the, the thought, let's say, on the railroad museum is that uh, the funding mechanism is in place, but nothing will be done probably for three to four years. And that seems like a long time, but three or four years happens very quickly. And, and I think we have to start moving in that direction and looking at other historic districts. Just so right now with our current city ordinance, we have a mechanism to say, what's happening, you know, whoa, you know, let's slow down, let's look at this, let's have public comment, you know, let's, let's at least review what we, we, we have to do. You know, at the same time, I agree with um, Charlie's estimate, you know, maybe it's time to, um, I know one of the concerns of, the, of people is like, how do we present, uh, prevent something like the Browder building um, from being demolished? And we were so close that the demolition permit pulled on that thing and, uh, you know, they've said before, once the demolition permit is pulled, most of the time it, it's over. But, you know, we have a second chance on that building. But there is still nothing to prevent that building to come down. I mean, the intentions of the current owners are great and everything, but if something happens, there's nothing to really protect that building. So, you know, I think as a priority, maybe it's time to relook at that, you know, that ordinance that was repealed, at least public discussion and get it back into the public domain and so we can discuss this because... You know, as a committee, I think that we can not only just do, we have to be able to chew gum and walk at the same time, because I think there's a lot of fairly urgent kind of issues that, you know, if, if, if the one thing we want to do is preserve our historic structures, and, you know, um, and it's just not the historic structures within the, uh, in, within the historic district, but, you know, the, the historic structures that may have not been in the original, um, you know, Federalist area and the six companies area, um, which is the current historic district. So that's my comment. But, you know, I, I think they're simultaneously, so that historic plan, um, as, as Blair referenced, is an important thing that I think that has to be accomplished right away. Well, one other comment I would make is one of the things, and I've brought this up before, is I don't think we really know what historic is. We don't know what, what period we're trying to preserve. There's a period in the early 30s. There's a period 35 to 40 when, when those houses were rented. There's a period after 35 where those houses were sold and people began to do things to them. And then there's a period after the 40s when, well, after the 30s when the dam was done, you know, when the workers left. All right. Uh, well, and there's a period in the 50s. So what are we preserving? Period right. are we preserving? So that's well, what the historic preservation right. plan will do. It'll go through your entire batch of properties 
and can divvy up your properties based on its their historic context. And I think so. that's what needs to be done, exactly. So we know, so we have a definition of what it is we're trying to preserve. And right now, I don't think we do. Okay. Right, I think we have to um, verbalize an historic plan. I think Heidi Swank and the Nevada Preservation, um, you know, uh, uh, the executive director there, she made a comment that, um, you know, the main thing, you can't save everything, but the main thing is like you're looking at, you know, what, you know, if you lose this building, you know, how does it tell the story of your community? And our community is still quite young, but it, it's such an important part of the historic history of America. We have people that still remember, this, you know, this is a, it's not a matter of how old this thing is, it's 200, you know, it's, it's how important the story is. And I think that, you know, I mean, and the Chippo, um Standards at 50 years is, you know, is, is, is like something becomes historic, and now we have to decide: is this something that tells our story, and what value, you know, and what will we lose if we don't have that piece of history? Is my thoughts. Okay, um, if we look at the goals and strategies um, that the city provided for us, which to me is sort of like a base for what we're working on. Um, look at strategy four on page 340, and it says, amend existing codes to achieve historic preservation goals, complete historic preservation plans. So, so these ideas need to be incorporated into that preservation plan. Is that correct, Michael? Would that be right? Number two, strategy number two is the historic preservation plan. Right, and but then here it says complete. So once we finish that, then we... Then we're down to this, correct. I see. Okay, yeah. so this is a, almost a two-year plan. Mm -hmm. But it's very, to me, it's, I mean, it's a lot. There's a lot here to accomplish. So it looks like we're headed in the right direction. What I'm hearing from everyone here is that there's... There's some really good ideas that are already kind of here. For instance, um, number four and five from our past priorities um, kind of tides well with what Alan was talking about as far as considering new um, properties to inventory. Mm -hmm. And then Charlie's come, you know, his um, proposals for re-inventorying either the existing historic district or updating the guidelines. Um, that kind of sounds like number three um, as well. So it just seems like we have our goals and ideas here. It's just a matter of maybe re-looking at them and putting them within this context and see yeah. if they fit. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think so, Blair. I mean, I, I, I think that I'm, hopefully I, I'm not, I don't have any problem with strategic plan, and I mean, there's good things in there. I think that needs some definition, and um, yeah. I, I, so. Okay, and then um, number 10, number 12, number 13, number 14, 15, 16, these are just things that we work on all the time. You know, our preservation day, um, the historic preservation award, um, we're already working on the updating existing historic guidelines for compliance with SHPO, obtaining training for the SHPO on another qualified professional on the use of SO standards of rehabilitation or another qualified professional. So it sounds like, you know, those are things that we'd probably be working on along with the strategic plan. So basically you guys just want this added, right? your things that you talked about added to the this list, discussion list? Either, so we have one more time. Either oh, added yeah. or kind of reorganized and reprioritized. And then yeah. I guess just give it to y'all or did you want um, the priorities uh, given in fiscal years or did you want them like attached to the city's goals and strategies? Like what would make it easier for the city or city council to um, implement our rec recommendations? Let me turn that back to you, I guess. 
with these two existing documents, this is what we had as a starting point. What we could do to help with the committee identifying priorities is, and I think what I'm hearing the committee say, routine items, they go on, that yeah. should not be priorities because right. those are already happening. Yeah. Again, the, the objective here is to communicate to the city council what the committee believes should be the highest priorities with respect to historic preservation. So we could take the um, priorities that have been identified this evening, um, add them to a list. We wouldn't focus on the uh, existing priority discussion list that talked about high, low, and medium. Yeah. We just simply list them and then we can come back to you at the next meeting at the end of the month and have you rank them okay. and eliminate the ones that you think aren't necessary, but rank them so that we can take that list to the city council. This is your highest priorities. Okay. If that would be helpful. Yeah, that, okay. sounds, that okay. sounds fair to me. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. I hear it. Okay, um, any other discussion on that? Okay, so then we're going to move on to possible uh, discussion of the activities for Historic Preservation Day 2020 and the Historic Preservation Award for 2020. So we have provided in the packet um, the uh, staff report. It's the um, a monthly staff report that discusses this item. Um, it provides a summary of some of the uh, prior conversations as it relates to both Historic Preservation Day and the annual award. And um, it's an opportunity for the committee to continue that conversation. Okay. Um, well, we sort of got started um, on perhaps a theme. And um, does anybody... Uh, like the theme, the city's 60th anniversary of the incorporation of the city. That's well, very favorable. Yeah, well, as a theme, a title, yeah. I mean, okay, yeah. something to kind of look to. I, guess, I, yeah. Um, yeah. I had a conversation with um, the people who are in charge over there at the Masonic Lodge, and um, that's downtown, you know, next to the police department, and he told me they would love to open up the uh, Masonic Lodge on Preservation hmm. Day. And to me, that would be a very interesting um, venue because, you know, how do you get into those places, you know? So it's, it seems like something that, you know, people might enjoy seeing. And he, yeah. he showed me a picture on his um, phone of them actually at the Bureau, at the beginning of the Bureau of Reclamation, they, they had the cornerstone there. They dedicated it and everything. I thought that was really interesting. So um, th that's one person that I think might be involved um, with the 60th anniversary, which would be kind of like our historic downtown area. Any other uh, comments? Well, I have, uh, Alan, I, I have an update. Sorry, I've been a little bit disengaged. I've been trying to keep yeah. alive in the last month. So okay, I kind Alan. of like got, yeah. I got kind of waylaid. But I did have some conversations with with um, Jill Lagan, the chamber, and some business owners in, in Boulder City. And, um, you know, there was lots of interest in the idea of kind of making it a, you know, the 60th anniversary of Boulder City. I mean, Boulder City was a very different place. And, in 1960, it wasn't the clean, green, beautiful place. It was kind of a little bit disorganized. We were trying to figure out where we were. And, um, you know, we've come a long way since 1960. Um, and they were very enthusiastic about participating, especially kind of like, you know, maybe a picture of, um, you know, then and, um, you know, 1960, what was happening there and what it is today, you know, as a perspective and kind of having a citywide open house as far as historic where people could go visit different places and my initial reactions with people were very enthusiastic and i could get the support of the uh, chamber i talked to the museum uh, a lot of the business owners along the street and so i haven't pursued a lot of effort on on there but i wanted to make sure that when the you know 
hopefully, knock on wood, I see my I get discharged as an outpatient and I can leave Arizona on Saturday and come home to Boulder City by next week is the plan right now. We're really happy and, about uh, that, Colin. We're glad you're doing so well. Well, thank you. And, you know, I'd like to pursue that if that's, what the, if that's the direction the committee would like to go in. Yeah, I think, I don't know. I mean, I just want to make sure that everybody's on board with that. I thought it was a good idea. Oh, the other thing I was asked to do was to talk about historic preservation awards. Um, you know, I brought in um, Gary Winters at the last meeting, and, um, you know, we talked about, I mean, it was actually about a budget for this thing, but Gary has agreed that, you know, whatever commercial or, you know, he's agreed that uh, if we wanted to add to the award, adding, um, let's say, the historic render with that little model uh, of a commercial um, a commercial uh, uh, entry and a residential entry, um, he would be happy to do those those renderings and those models for uh, two hundred fifty dollars a piece. So that would, if we did one commercial and one residential, that would add five hundred dollars to that budget. So well, as far as I've gotten on that thing, yeah, it seems to me if we go that direction, we're going to have to get a little heftier budget from the city. Um, Susan indicated that we still have fifteen hundred dollars, I think, in that budget. And um, that would get cobbled up real fast with those two presentations. I, I think it's well worth, you know, the money that would be invested there. Um, but I think we're going to have to somehow, well, how do we go about that, getting in the budget? Well, it well would... part... Go ahead, Alan. Well, part of it, I think in the last minutes, if you look at our last minutes, we had talked about, you know, our desire to talk about maybe different categories and you know how we want to expand this this yeah. award thing and I think one of the comments was we wanted Blair uh, to kind of be involved with it. I mean because you know I don't think Blair was there and we wanted a whole yeah. committee to talk about I include you in our and I don't think this is <laughs> right well we just love your input you know just like what are the categories and how do we do this and you know let you know yeah. Um, you know, we, we're becoming more structured with this award now. And I think that as we open it up, you know, at one time the award was really purely at the discretion of the committee. You know, it was committee chose and voted on. It was no public input in it. You know, it was just really at the whim of the committee. Now that it is opening it up, I think we need a little bit more structure and people want to know what the rules are and what the criteria are. So. I think that the more we open this up, you know, I think the original intent was to open this up um, to the public to get them more interested in, in historic preservation and pride in their own personal properties. But, you know, along with that, um, you know, uh, more, more structure, what I want to say, in the award. So I think it's one of the things we have to consider. Okay. Well, um, we could take a, a vote on whether we wanted to expand it to residential and non-residential, or we could um, wait until uh, next meeting on that, whether we wanted to have both. Right now we just have one award, but what happened was we there was so much excitement with the award itself that we just had tons of you know people saying i want my home in there and then i uh, and then we had these beautiful commercial buildings too that were um being you know preserved so we thought maybe it would be good to offer one for residential and one for non-residential and if if in fact the non-residential if there's not a someone that um comes forward with that award then we would just go with just the residential but at least we would have two options then we would we wouldn't disclude um someone's home if we wanted to do a residential you know it would open it up a little bit more so the commercial yeah well okay i guess the way that susan described it would be residential and non-residential right so um do you want to vote on that now or I mean, do you feel comfortable about that, or you want to wait till next time? Well, well, I don't. I don't have any objection to having the two, 
two categories. Uh, my understanding was that we were going to, number one, try to define what it took to, to be awarded um, the designation. Like guidelines. Guidelines. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I don't have any objection to having two of them. I, I think that one of, the, one of the other things that we discussed was that if <clears throat> we don't have to make an award if there isn't anything that's worthy of right. it, or if there's no nomination for exactly. it. Exactly. So, yeah. Uh, but at least we would have it. At least we would have it open um, so that we could, so it doesn't, it doesn't exclude all those people that wanted their homes, you know, to be considered. Yeah. I thought that was just like, you know, oh, let's, let's open it up and, and let more have, and then, you know, they worked really hard. So, um, well, does everybody feel favorable? Do, you, do we have to vote on that? Or we just talk about it? You don't have to vote. Okay. You don't have to vote on it at this time. Um, okay. Or you could. It's, it's up to you. I mean, it's, okay. it's really the ongoing monthly discussion about both yeah. these items. Well, I th I'd like to get it firmed up so that we... Because then we're still going to have to ask for more money. You know, we're going to have to... How, whatever the avenue is, we're going to have to go to the city council and get a bigger budget. You know. Okay. Uh, well, I think All the right. other discussion we had um, was that should we open it up to outside the historic district? You know. Oh, yeah, um, we talked about that before. R right now, it's, it's just exclusively to, to, you know, properties in within the historic district. Um, and that was another thing we talked about. I mean, there are certainly historic homes out there that aren't in the proper district. Um, but I, I, I don't mind, you know, considering right now, just uh, uh, putting in a motion that we have a, a um, commercial and a, I mean, a, a non-residential a non and residential uh, categories as a, as a starting point for our discussion. Okay. I don't have any problems with that. So did you want to make the motion then, Alan? I can make a motion that, you know, Good. there's further discussion, but we, we consider uh, for the Historic um, Preservation Award a residential and a non-residential award for next year's Historic Preservation Day. Okay. Like that. Um, is there a second? To the... I second. Okay. Okay. So um, we can vote now. Um, let's see. Technically, I'm acting as chairman. I you don't would, think I have a vote, do I? No, no, you do vote. Do and I? You would just okay. ask, all in favor, say aye. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Nay. All right. Hearing none, then we will um, approve this award to expand to residential and non-residential. All right. Very good. I'm glad to see that done. Um, did you want to uh, look at asking for money from the city council at this time, or how do we do that? Like, do we have to? <laughs> well, the, obviously the um, budget is approved. Um, already. Well, the budget yeah. for fiscal year 20 is already approved. Yeah. Um, but what I would recommend is moving forward if, you know, the uh, specific costs associated with this are defined, we can incorporate that as part of our next proposed budget. Okay. Certainly um, uh, something that's nominal we could cover yeah. within this budget, but anything more significant, we'd want to take that to the yeah. uh, city council as part of the regular process. Well, Alan, it looks like um, we're going to have to have like some figures, some black and white figures as to how much we actually need. So if we're going to have two awards at $250 a piece, that's $500 per year. So, and I don't know how long uh, that, oh, it's just a one year budget. Every year it changes. So if we, so then, okay. So um, of course we also have our historic preservation day also. But I think probably what you need to do is uh, put together some black and white figures on how much the, um, the what the two hundred and fifty dollars is for for each award and what what it is and who it is and all that just type up something and bring it maybe to the next meetings that way we can okay. pass it on to um, our, the development officer 
and then they can put it back in our packet or whatever. Would that be the way it would work? The uh, development officer? I mean, the community, uh, community development officer is what I mean. Oh, okay. Like, so we pass I, it on to you? and then Certainly, we would put it in the packet. Okay. Yes. Okay, then it would go yeah, in the packet. I mean, I'm not sure what more you need than to say that he's willing to do it to whatever the building is for 250 apiece. I don't know what the plaque is. Now, Susan had in turn, there might be some money already left in that budget. There it's is. not really been, there is not like, it's not a big, $500 is not a huge amount for the city, although it's well, no. a lot of money. Yeah, that's but, not the point. You know, I, I mean, I can write up a proposal, I mean, more of yeah. a, you need like a, a proposal, this, this is what it's going to cost, something yeah. like that. Yeah, just like how okay. much the, because he was going to do a painting or something, wasn't he? Along with it, as I recall, yeah, well, the, he, he had a painting, painting and, and the little mold of the right thing. and yeah. the model. Yeah, and, and I'll then bring we that. also do the plaque, which probably doesn't cost more than thirty dollars, probably. But this is this other item is going to be a little more expensive. Right. So if you could just type something up, um, then we'll okay. give it to the community development office, and then they'll get get it back into our packet for next okay. time. And then I was looking okay. at this, I, you know, I really thought that coloring book, that was a fantastic idea. Now, I don't know how much that's going to cost. What did you guys think about the coloring book? For the, we could give them out at our preservation day. It's a great idea, but I wasn't here to, oh. you know. Oh, you didn't see it. Yeah, yeah okay. and I don't okay. know what the cost or who was going to take on that yeah. project. Could you, uh, Alan? When you do the yeah. other costs, could you could see how much it's going to cost for the coloring book? Because he yeah, said um, I can do that. You know, would I? You know, perhaps um, just because I think next this month's coming agenda is going to be packed. I think we, we're going to have a big agenda okay. for the end of the month meeting. Maybe let me let me schedule um, if it's all right with the committee to schedule Gary to come in. Not in August, but, but September's meeting because I think we got some time, and okay. he can represent his his you know the awards that I think Ray did Blair see, didn't Ray have a chance that. to see that. Did Ray you know, see the, that? The model. I can't remember exactly. Ray, Ray didn't. I don't know if Ray saw it. Ray saw it. Ray saw it. Ray saw it. Okay. Okay. So Blair, you yeah. were the only one that did. It would be good for you to see it. You know. Yeah, and, and to see what he had in the coloring book thing. I mean, that was yeah. his presentation there. Maybe we can put that on the September agenda and yeah. so I can bring uh, Gary in at that date because yeah. I think next month we're going to be really I think we have our hands you want to wait till September to do the the expense yeah because okay. yeah, next month we're going to have our hands full with um, okay trying to get something to the city council our recommendation our priority so okay that's know. fine okay. Uh, we'll wait till September and then you'll have everything ready for us to look at and then we can hand it on right okay meanwhile uh, you guys are comfortable with me kind of pursuing uh, the concept for the 60th birthday yeah. uh, for Hair Start Preservation okay. Day? I think everybody okay. likes it. Ray's not here, okay. but, you know, Ray, as long as we open up the water treatment plant, he's happy, you know. So okay. we could do that for Ray and <laughs> make sure that gets okay. up there. So, okay. All right. Very good. Well, I, I'm excited. Okay. I think that coloring book is a great idea. It's an, it's a nice way to, to, you know, help the families understand too, what's going on in the children. Um, right. It builds the one pride in their community. The, you know, right, that's what we're doing it for. Yeah. Okay. Great. All right. Um, anything else to discuss? I guess we've decided on the 60th anniversary then. Okay. Um, Next is discussion and update on the status of properties in the historic district. And this is the monthly staff report on the status of historic properties. The one thing that staff wanted to note is that with the LA Department of Water and Power Building, painting will begin on August 19th. Yay! Let's give a clap for the city. <laughs> We have been working on that for a couple of years, and I, I can't wait to see it painted. <laughs> they, Thank you for all your help and work. <laughs> well, it, it's all public works. Um, yeah. With their work and, and uh -huh. the selection of the contractor, they will also be replacing uh, windows that have been broken. And obviously, as we had shared with the committee previously, um, using the forensic analysis, yeah. uh, they identified the original color of the building and that's what's going to be painted. 
it's going to take uh, between uh, 30 and 90 days to complete the project. Well, that's very exciting. Uh, I have a question. <laughs> Michael, are there any thoughts on what's going to happen with landscaping? Yes, um, I have uh, reached out to the Public Works Department and um, asked them that question. I do not have a response back as to what are the long-term plans with landscaping. Okay. All right. Any other comments on this particular uh, item? Front, I guess there's a front porch addition. We know about Amy's product project and the LA Water and Power Building. So things are moving along very well, which we are grateful. Any other comments or discussion? I have to correct you on my name. Oh, it's t Tara. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay, sorry. Sometimes I my brain is a little slow, <laughs> but Tara. Okay. I'll look at you a little more and then I'll get it right. <laughs> Thank you for correcting me. So I, I did have a question about this, of, was it Stantec, the facility strategy? Any results from that? Uh, we are hopeful to get a report back from them within the next uh, month and a half. And um, when um, they provide us that preliminary information, uh, the objective is later on this year, taking their findings to the city council. Will the Historic Preservation Committee get a copy regarding the historic properties as far as recommendations that they may, might have there that might require the committee to weigh in on? Absolutely, we can provide a copy to the committee. Thank you. Okay, okay, any other comments? Charlie, Alan? Nope, thank you. Okay. Well, I do have one comment. All right. That I, that I, <coughs> zipped right over the top of my head when I should have been. <laughs> the minutes of the last meeting, it says, uh, Member Hans noted that he is in process of cataloging all the houses and nomination. It would be nice to... Uh, Member Graham stated it would be nice to talk about the different housing. And, uh, Member Graham suggested that Member Hans pick out four or five homes as a sample that they could incorporate into the to the Boulder City 60th anniversary. Uh, that didn't appear on the agenda. Yeah, uh, well, I think we were just sort of like. So uh, I, well, I know we were just sort of ignoring the avenues again, like no, we have always done. No, no so no. I would ask that next, not next, because I agree with Alan, next month is going to have many things. Mm -hmm. September, I would like to put that on the agenda. Okay. Because whether you like it or not, I'm going to talk about the houses mm -hmm. in the, the avenues. Yep. And I'm going to have a guided tour of okay. the avenues. Well, that's great, Charlie. We're excited. And maybe well, someday we'll even get it on the agenda and we can actually talk about it. That would be an amazing thing. Well, I'm, so, I'm sorry that got misplaced in all this but um, we didn't forget you and we're excited <laughs> that you're taking the time to making that really nice for the community so I know that they will really appreciate it I'm sure they will. so thank just, you just so I can see clarification on what yeah. the agenda item is it is uh, a discussion regarding the houses on the avenues to yeah. Well, what? What, he, what he wants to do is um, we're going to include it on the 60th anniversary day. And what we're going to have, he's going to have a guided tour of like four or five homes. And the idea is to like, it's an educational process so that they can see like the avenues, the okay. bat houses. It, you know, wouldn't, like, it wouldn't need a separate agenda item. It would be okay. incorporated into our regular standing agenda item that discusses the annual historic preservation day and okay. the awards so exactly. you would just you would just bring it up during that mm -hmm. time okay and great. so just i uh, got clarification from the committee because mm -hmm. the meeting at the end of this month will be there'll be a lot on that yeah. agenda you are asking that we'll bring back historic preservation day in september and you can discuss these items yes okay okay great thank I you i just have a question ahead. Charlie, have you viewed the uh, house on C that was the Teddy Penton house that the museum owns today? 
Have you seen that? Have you toured that home? It, have I seen it today? Yeah. That's the one the museum you, owns. Yeah, right. Right. Is museum. it out now? I mean, is it re it's, yes, it's being rented? I, yeah, I actually read the letters about the transfer and et cetera. All right, right, right. Well, we'll give you a tour. Have you been inside? No, no. Well, I'll make sure we get a tour inside. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be oh, great. Oh, yeah. I'd love to show you this house. Yeah. It's amazing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But thank good. you for standing up for the avenues. <laughs> It'll be like a broken record, Alan. <laughs> so that, that's what it takes, man. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Charlie. And, and thank you, Blair and Alan. Um, thank you. Me. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Um, okay. Now we have another public comment time. So um, if there's any com comments, please come to the podium. You have five minutes. And please state your name so that the um, development department can um, have your name correct. Judy DeShane. First off, I would like to thank the Hoover Dam people for fixing the sidewalk for us handicapped. When I go there, I use an electric cart, and it is difficult the way it is, so I'll be very happy to that. So thank you, guys. The other thing is I was wondering, what is going to be the date, the calendar date of the August meeting? Um, boy, Mike, well, Michael can help with that. Hang on. It is, yeah, it's always... It's always the last. Um, That's what I was afraid you were going to say. You realize the utility committee no. is having the meeting on the 28th. No. No. Did they change oh. it? They have to. It's a conflict. OK. Yeah, uh, the um, Historic Preservation Committee always meets on the, la on the fourth Wednesday of every month. Well, that's what I have on my calendar. But then at the utility commission meeting when they were they had said, you know, the 28th, and uh, Dennis couldn't, uh, nobody said anything about it being a conflict. When I got home that night, looked at my calendar, I thought, well, what the hell? So I just wanted to make sure somebody was aware of it so it got straightened out, because I don't want to miss either meeting. It's my problem. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Judy. Thank you, Judy. I would have been disappointed if you hadn't come up and said something. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to mention, I'm Tara Bertoli, and uh, I just wanted to let you know that I did, when we applied for the loan, we got a 504 SBA loan, and uh, we got a small business loan that also helped us buy the building. We got a federal loan to do that, mm -hmm. wow. and they were very stringent uh, with regard to the historic nature of our property. And it took us six months and three stacks of paper like this that we had to, they wanted to know every detail of that building, more so than Boulder City, of course, right? Because of our guidelines, they aren't so strict. But the federal government was watching your back when I bought, when Troy and I bought our building. And uh, it was... Um, it, the Nevada State Historic Preservation Office was uh, guiding the way for the LA preservation attorney. He was really uh, intense. And the, the LA Department of Water and Power, you know how they to take care of their things. It, it, anyway, those two, those two people are great resources, of course you know. Um, I really learned a lot in the six months having to deal with the uh, Nevada SHPO and the U.S. Department uh, of Historic Preservation because they were serious as a heart attack about <laughs> us buying oh, that that's, property that's and, and making sure that we were going to preserve it and not knock it down. That's so wonderful to hear. Just so you know, you might want to have some type of incentive program in the commercial district for people that take SBA 504 loans because they were really encouraging when it comes to preservation. Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. did, did you ask about or did the SHPO offer advice on tax incentives? Um, no, that wasn't brought up. 
might ask because I believe I believe commercial properties within either a historic district or if they are nominated or actually on the national register can benefit from tax or ha get a oh. tax benefit um, okay. but it's complicated and mm -hmm. if you've already got a relationship with the shipo ask him about that okay um, I don't know if it applies for a structure that's just in the historic district or if it has to be actually listed on the national register um, but this is where this training the CLGs um, training that I think we're going to have to go to mm -hmm. will help us and maybe it's something we can offer to business owners perhaps. Um, it's something we could talk more about at a sure. later date because it's getting late but I just wanted to let you know that Thank I you. went through that process. Thank you. Thank you Tara. Just on that there was a uh, Oh, could you get to the mic, please? We're re recording. Oh, totally, sorry. Um, just on that, there were there are some tax incentives. Um, however, Boulder City didn't uh, meet the cut. There are certain areas. I think it's depending on the need. I'm not sure all the criteria. Uh, the water district, for example, uh, down there is a is a one, and so that's why they have a lot of uh, uh, development going on down there. Uh, and so I think there's significant tax gains when you sell the building, um, you like miss capital gains tax or something like that. Mm -hmm. Water Street. Water Street. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah, um, Val, I have another comment. I was just um, speaking to friends in San Diego who live in this historic district, and one of the things we should consider down the road, and I know it's kind of brought up and inferred at the city council meeting was that um, you know, we have to kind of know what we what our plan is. But one of the things that San Diego has is a um, uh, an historic development um, office that coordinates all of these different things, like incentive tax incentives, state, you know, local, and tries to pull all these together. So, like, you know, there's like a one stop shop that kind of you pull all of these um, these elements together in a historic district, and to make sure that um, that the not only that the people are conforming to what the standards are, but they're also benefiting for whatever incentives that are available. So maybe, that's something else we have to consider. Maybe for the benefit of everyone, and just to make sure that we're following open meeting. I don't want to. That's right. Very... But they pull in. They pull in different. You know, state. You know, because California has a lot of layers. Like there's state ordinance, there's federal, and they have a. So they have a city department that just deals with all of those items this is um, and, and pulls them together yeah this is something we can certainly talk about when we bring shipo in for training and have that as part of the topic discussion and part of the agenda right so you know, you know what are the mechanisms yeah. we need to maintain these things you know yeah. and, and enforce these things thank, but, thank you alan okay at this yeah. time then we are adjourned uh, oh Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see you over there. Come on up. <laughs> yeah, just, just in the nick of time. Yeah. Um, James Adams, uh, again, I'm just here uh, as an interested citizen um, with my thoughts. Um, regarding uh, the um, item number six, where we were uh, talking about priorities and goals and looking at when you have, you know, 16 priorities, that kind of Mm -hmm. leads you to think that some of these things aren't priorities, you know, when you're when you're going that far down the line um, and looking at it, it looks like a lot of them do kind of work together, you know, they're kind of in the same element or same area. And I would think that, you know, j you know, how many times do you meet a month, once a month, typically, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and if you're kind of trying looking at how these different things are going to be tackled, that's more than even just a year. Obviously, some of these things are going to take a lot of time to uh, to really tackle, um, but I think really kind of paring it down and seeing like what are the what's at the core of what these things are trying to be, I I would think would be helpful uh, for the committee to really uh, targeting. So just just my uh, my two cents on that uh, on that. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, James. Okay, then at this time, then we are adjourned. Great job, Linda. Oh oh, thanks, Alan. You're welcome. Yeah. Yep. Thank you.